And here's another one. We got two today. So here's our oh, second one. Here we one. go. Here's our second one. This one might be a pretty short answer. All right. <laughs> it's I'm ready. The truth. And there's no disrespect to the person who sent it in. It's just it's just going to be kind of short, maybe. Or not. We, we talk about we stuff. Can, we can, we we can, can make anything not that short. On but. On. but, yeah, okay. Here's a question. They want to know, is there an easy way to explain the Trinity? No. No. <laughs> no, there's not an easy way to explain it. There is no the easy way to explain it. And I get where that comes from because people hear that term and they, you know, and for those of you who are just new to whole, this whole thing. What yeah, they, that's probably important. What, what we mean by the Trinity is you've got God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, three in one. Our God is one. We have one God, but he exists in three distinct persons. Right. Um, and that doesn't mean three forms. That is not what it means. Mm -hmm. It means that... He is one, but at the same time, he is the three at the same time. That's why it's hard to describe. Yeah, it's... Because you can't describe it. No, you can't. And, and every time, the longer you talk about it, yes. the more, more you know, you're talking about it, I'm going, mm, Jason, okay, be <laughs> Don't careful. Don't say that. Jason, be careful. You yeah. know, because it's, it's just one of those things that it, yeah. it doesn't make sense to our human minds how that could be possible. And we try to come up with metaphors that make it work. And they may be helpful to some degree, but, not, but yeah. they're not really the picture because that's us trying to put mm -hmm. our view of something, our mm -hmm. minds around and, inf you know, we are finite. We exist in a single place at a single time. And, <laughs> yes. and God is infinite. His his mind, you know, as as the scriptures would say, is his ways are not our ways. Right. His thoughts are not our So for us to be able to comprehend it, it, it doesn't it yes. doesn't fully, fully grasp it. And know? I think for, for a long time in my understanding of God, and I would, I would probably be at that same place where I'm mean, I want to understand it. Please help me explain it. And, and, I, and like you said, I heard a lot of people use a lot of analogies, and they were helpful but always fell short and then you could poke holes in them you know because mm -hmm. they all fall short but what what it helped me to come down on is that the moment that I feel that I have fully comprehended God and who he is and mm -hmm. what his nature is like I've I've got it complete there I don't have any more questions right all mystery is taken out of it to the longer that I've grown as a Christian, the more I realize that that's not a healthy place for me to be in because the moment I think I have God figured out, I've essentially put him in a box. Mm -hmm. And and if he is who he is, infinite, greater than everything, mm -hmm. then there's always going to be mm -hmm. things that I don't understand about him. Right. And once I do understand them, then I'm probably not talking about God anymore. Right. I'm talking about probably what I have figured out in my brain to talk about God. So yes. there's and, and the cool, and um, I was talking, talking about this to somebody one time. We as Westerners tend to not be comfortable with any sense of mystery yeah, when it comes right. to God. But the Eastern uh, culture had no problem with that. That's right. So when they would have talked about this and said, well, it's just a mystery, people go, yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, and just moved on. We don't do it that way. Mm -mm. We want to go. Oh no, it can't be a mystery. And right. I've got to understand this because if I don't understand, then how can I how can I know God? Well, that's that's just not true. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's this hyper rationalistic mindset that mm -hmm. makes me think that in order to in order to engage with anything, I have to be able to understand it, or someone yes. does. And it's 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 honestly, it's almost like a pseudo-scientific way. And the reason I say pseudo-scientific is because it's not really scientific, because yeah. even science understands there's mystery because that's the purpose of science yeah. is delving into there are things that we still don't fully understand, and we're coming up with theories to try and explain these things. Mm. But even those theories occasionally we get deeper into it and we go, Oh, mm, that's not the you know, that's mm -hmm. not the right theory on it and so the reason I say pseudoscience is it's it's almost um, like in it's almost this egotistical mindset that I often have of like mm -hmm. well I sh like you said I should understand yeah. it if I'm really rational I need to have so I just I'm willing to accept a half answer mm -hmm. and say that's the full answer instead of embracing what you're what you're talking about which I think is huge is saying there's just a mystery to God yes. and that's kind of the, the beauty of God being infinite, and I heard somebody say this once, I thought it was so good, is that God's infinite, and God is love, and that means God's love is infinite. Hmm. And he said, so what that means is we can't ever fully comprehend it. And there's all parts of the scripture that talk about that, that, yeah. you know, that you'd be able to kind of comprehend how vast and wide and long. And what he's really saying is you can't. You can only just embrace <laughs> the mystery of yeah. God loves me. And what he says, because it's infinite, then it would take all of infinity to really understand it. That's all really heaven is, is mm -hmm. us 
diving deep into how big God is and yeah. how big his love is. And so, um, but and, yeah. And then the person who actually asked that question had, had mentioned in their statement, they said, you know, a lot of people will say to me, you know, if Jesus is God, how in the world could he actually, he was actually praying to himself? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. that's, that's part of the mysterious part of it. Right. Is, you know, there is three distinct persons and they interact with one another and, and that, yeah, in a relational way. In a way. relational way. And that's yeah. that's such a, that's to me, that, that has been such a cool part of understanding God in His nature is that He has existed for eternity, eternity past, eternity future, in community right. with Himself because of that dynamic, the Trinity. And that here I am, I'm getting, talking about it, and I'm hesitating because yeah. it's so mysterious. But that is what, that is what is revealed to us in Scripture, revealed to us through Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, that... Yes, Jesus is just as fully God as God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And um, a lot of people want to push back on that and say, well, it can't be because there's God the Father and He, right. you know, and that whole thing. But, you know, Jesus, Jesus had no problem embracing the Godhood mm -hmm. when, I mean, I always point to people when they say, would Jesus really think He was God? And I said, well, if He really, if He didn't think He was God, then He, he certainly didn't act like it because anytime anyone referred to him that way, especially when you see towards the end of the Gospels, many times they're, they're falling down at his feet and worshiping him. Mm -hmm. He never stops anybody. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's interesting. If he really mm -hmm. did, if he really did value God right. the way he said he did, right. if somebody worships you, you go, oh, no, no, that's not, that's, that don't do that. In fact, yeah. we see the disciples doing that. Right. When people try to put God-like attributes on them, they go, no, 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 we're just men. We're just right. people. Well, then they fall down and worship. And of course, in Revelation, you've got people falling down at the feet of Jesus and worshiping. And not once has anybody ever stopped from doing that. Right. He's taking, he is taking worship as God. So fully God, fully human, fully yeah. who he is, um, but still at the same time, all one. Relational so, in that way. And, yeah. you know, and you may hear some of this if you, you, know, if you weren't the person who asked the question and kind of think, okay, but why does any of this matter? Yeah. Because it, cause it just feels... Like even all this is very kind of philosophical a, a mental and, and, exercise. Yeah, and, it's, and it's mystery. But, you know, I heard someone explain it to me this way. And I thought this was so good. As they said, the part you talked about of there, God exists with, within a community within himself, mm -hmm. that God is, is a community. And the part of that is when we say God is love. That's almost what exactly what we're talking about is that before we existed, before God had any outside object to be the object of his love, <laughs> yes. God in relationship, because it talks about that, that the son submits to the father and the father mm -hmm. submits to the son. And it's this whole, it's this whole symbiotic relationship. Right. And, and that may seem once again weird, but what it comes to me is that God didn't need me. God chose me, mm -hmm. and that's a different, that's a whole different thing because all of us have ended up in relationships where either we or someone else has said, oh, I really love you, and because I love you, I need you. Yeah. And it quickly becomes clear, that's not really love because when I need you. when I, codependent. Yes, the Jerry Maguire, <laughs> you complete me. Yeah. That is, when I need you, it becomes less about me loving you and about me making sure I get love. There you go. And God does not exist in that kind. That's how mm -hmm. God can purely be love is because God is love by mm -hmm. his very nature. And so I get that the whole concept of, of all this may seem a little kind of intellectual and on a side doesn't matter. But I think that part you can, just as a reminder of yeah. God loves you, not because he needs you, but because he chooses to love you. And he, Absolutely. He's just who he is by his nature. I think that's huge. Good stuff, man. That's some application that makes there makes, we go. Makes this discussion maybe a little more worthwhile. So. Well, and that was not short, so. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Apologize. Well, the original that. answer was The short. first, we gave a one-word answer. The answer was it. no. But, That's right. So, anyway. But there is importance to the discussion. Yes. So thank you for asking the question, because it definitely was a worthwhile discussion. Definitely. All right.